Hello everybody, it is OCD Mikey here, live and in living color. And um, I am here for another installment of Navigating Hi-Fi BS. Uh, maybe that's what I'll call this series. Um, what I want to go over with is a couple of things that you have heard probably a lot lately. And I want to set something straight for you so you can kind of make sense of it all, okay? Um, the first thing I'm going to go over is what is I squared S? What is all this crap that you hear? I squared S, I two S. What is this stuff? Okay. Um, here's the thing. Okay, and I'll tell you why. Why we even have I squared S? Okay, I squared S is the native protocol for PCM music on a circuit board, namely your motherboard of your computer, which we're using for this example. Uh, so it exists on the board, on the little traces, as something called I squared S. It is not meant to leave the motherboard, and it's not meant to go further than, I think it's six inches, is the longest length that it's supposed to go. It's not supposed to go any longer than that. It's not supposed to leave the motherboard. Okay, And so the way it works is I squared S goes is converted on the output of your computer. It's converted to USB for travel. Okay, So it's converted to USB, it travels out, goes over to the DAC, and then when it gets inside the DAC, it's then converted back from USB to I squared S so that you can go ahead and do the decoding and the filters and whatever else. So the idea is let's skip that conversion because you know how it is with Hi-Fi any extra conversion is a bad thing. It's it's a lossy, so we don't want to do it. So some hi-fi nut got it in his mind. We need to eliminate USB because it's a crappy protocol and noisy, and uh, and we'll just use I squared S. Then we don't have to do any conversion. Okay. The problem with that is that a couple things. First of all, I squared S is not meant to be off the motherboard. It's not meant to go through cables. Okay. It wasn't designed for that. The other thing is that it's a very loose design, meaning there are not strict parameters around that protocol to dictate to a designer how to design it and how to implement it, especially if it's leaving outside and going off the circuit board. It's anyone's guess, okay? Um, so therefore, each company is left to interpret that in their own manner and implement that in their own manner. Now, there are a few guidelines that people follow such as LVDS, okay? LVDS is the, uh, the way that your computer moves video, digital video, off the motherboard and to, to the camera or whatever. It's a differential way of transmitting data, okay? Because it has dual wires, it's better for noise. That's what differential, read what differential is. It's balanced, okay? So LVDS is, is the main one. There are other people use different protocols. Some people you've seen, they use uh, RJ45 and like an Ethernet cable. Um, in the case of Playback Designs, it's an ST glass digital, so it's fiber optic. Um, I've seen DIN plugs, where there's like a little five pin DIN plugs that are used. And, uh, and you just sort of, and, and then in terms of the pin out, meaning which pins do what function, it's different for people. So there is no common way or, or, or followed way to do it. Therefore, a lot of these pieces, they will have a little um, switches or what have you. So you can change uh, and modify the pin out of the plug so you can make things work together because there's going to be incompatibilities between brands when using I squared S because everybody, again, implements it differently and there's a very loose protocol that's uh, documented about how to implement I squared S. Uh, and, and it shouldn't be off the motherboard anyways. So what, what does this all mean? Okay, what it means is it's really an idea that probably had a sound in, you know, concept you know, of avoiding a conversion. But in terms of the carry out of that, became a little problematic and everybody did it their different ways the ones that are even worth thinking about are going to be the people that implemented it well and did a good job at that implementation 
Because if you have a poor job of that implementation, you're way better off using USB, okay? So I squared S is not something that is crucial to your enjoyment of hi-fi, okay? It's not crucial. In certain instances, let's take the AudioByte DAC, for instance, that I carry. Uh, it has the hub that's going to come out. The hub is a streamer, and it also will take all the digital inputs and convert them to I squared S on the output so that it can go into the DAC via I squared S, which is HDMI. The, the, like I said, the, the LVDS video protocol, that's why it's on an HDMI. Uh, and, um, and that will be, I'm guessing, implemented very well because Rockna, the company behind AudioByte, is very adept at designing those kind of things. They, in fact, they create that for other companies. They create their I squared S protocol. They create their um, um, their DACs many times or the, or the uh, algorithms. They're really good at the math and making it all work out. They're, they're, they're very good at that. So I have no question that with AudioByte, it's going to be good. Now, some of the other brands that um, are, are, are brands whereby that country likes to reverse engineer things and copy things, they might not get the implementation down so well. And it might not sound that great. It might not sound any better than Spdiff. Spdiff is really the only one out of all of these connections, a digital connection for music. Spdiff is the only one that was really soup to nuts created for digital, bat, digital data stream uh, transfer. Well, ST Digital was as well, the glass fiber. But, um, you know, an XLR and an AES, that's a, that's a microphone connector, a microphone thing. Uh, the uh, USB is a printer cable. Um, so, you know, it's kind of dodgy in there. Now, the USB is probably your safest bet. Even though USB can be noisy, I've listened to a lot of DACs, and the best DACs that I've had, they will take USB, and it sounds phenomenal. Um, on the Rockna Wave Dream Signature Balance, which is the top of the line Rockna, sixteen thousand um, bucks. There were times when I and I had a converter that would convert to I, I squared S. Here's another thing: either have I squared S come out of your server and go to the DAC and do it that way, but don't put a converter right in the middle of the, you know, outside the unit because. It really doesn't make sense, okay? Inside the DAC, you've got that converter that converts back to uh, I squared S from USB. So why take it out of the DAC and move it somewhere in the middle of the line where you do the conversion there and then you send I squared S on a cable again into the DAC? You're better off having it on the inside receiving end of the DAC. So by putting an I squared S converter in line, all you're doing is doubling it up. There's already one inside your DAC. You're just making a second one. Okay, so it's kind of useless. Um, and when comparing to the, the, the AudioByte converter, which converted uh, USB to uh, uh, I squared S, USB was still better direct to my ears. Um, and, um, and I think that was kind of the way that it was. I think they, they knew that as well. Some engineers, you'll ask about I squared S, and you will see them and hear them, eh, they kind of do, they grunt a little, because eh, they know it's, not, it's a bastardized protocol that's not supposed to be doing what it's doing. It's a hack, really. And, uh, and so you can tell their disdain for it the second you start talking about it. And then others, you won't, you know, they're just all about it, whatever. So it's two different kinds of, of, of engineers. Um, but, uh, um, and, and the ones that groan are probably not going to spend a lot of time putting a lot of time into that part of their design, they're probably going to put more into the USB because they don't even think that I squared S should be used anyways. They're just doing it because the customers want it. Okay. So, um, so that's the deal with I squared S. I squared S is not crucial. It's not the cat's meow. It's not like this some great thing that's going to make it all better. Okay. It just, it's just not, it's, it's there for a marketing purpose. Um, yeah, it works. Yeah, some companies do it better than others. Um, I will trust AudioByte as, as, as probably being one of the leaders in, in it, and I'll see on this newest piece when it comes out in maybe a month how, how it's implemented. Maybe they've improved it. They probably have because they've been at it now for uh, several years um, since it's become a fad, you know. 
So that's the deal with I squared S. That's what it is. It's a protocol that's supposed to be inside the computer and not leave. And we have hacked it and bastardized it and turned it into a selling point so we can keep pushing DAX. Like we need more DAX, okay? There's too many DAX out there already, okay? Um, so that's the deal with I squared S. Not crucial, okay? Here's the other thing, okay? Outboard clock, okay? I see companies selling outboard clock with their DAX as an option, okay? Uh, as if it's meant to make the DAX sound better, okay? Nothing could be farther from the truth. That is a bastardized reason for using the clock. I mean, the protocol would be the same as the real reason why you'd use a clock, but the, but the, 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 the reason is, is, is different, right, okay? The reason, okay, what a master clock does, okay, master clock is a, it's an outboard piece that has a clock inside of a high quality usually, and then it's got several outputs on the back. Maybe, I mean, it can have up to like six or eight even, okay? Some of them have just one. If it has one, that's probably your clue. It's not, that, that means it was made for hi-fi and not professional audio. And so if it's just got one output, I would not take it too serious. Um, uh, it, it should have like four outputs because here's what it is. When you are making music, okay, and, and you're producing it in the studio and you have outboard gear, okay, or you're syncing the, uh, uh, um, the audio to a video piece, okay, uh, the master clock synchronizes all those digital pieces together. As you know, every digital piece has their own clock inside of it. That, that, that keeps its timing, tick, 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 you know, it, it sets its timing for its, its data stream, okay? Each individual piece has its individual clock and it runs like that. Now, if you want to synchronize them, you then get a master clock which slaves all four of your pieces and now all four of your pieces listen to the clock. They're under the influence of the clock of the master. So it synchronizes pieces of gear together. Um, it is not meant, and it was not designed to make your DAC sound better, okay? Now, if it does, that means your DAC probably has a crappy clock. If it can be made better by having a, just a, an outboard clock, here's the other thing. The clock also, under its protocol, the, 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 um, the, the clock that's inside each piece, okay, especially inside your DAC, is supposed to be right next to the DAC chip or the R2R ladder. It needs to be right there, okay? That is because you don't want any sort of transmission line. You don't, the longer you move the clock away from the DAC chip or the, where it does the conversion, the worse it is, the more error that will, will um, happen, the more loss that will happen. So the best way to do a clock is for sure to have it on the board right next to the converter, okay? When you take it outside of the unit and now you run it down a freaking cable, you're going to get loss. You're going to get jitter. You're going to get error, okay? And if the DAC, if you can take an outboard DAC and make your DAC sound better, even th that it's like, you know, what, three feet, a meter away from the DAC chip and it's on coming from another machine, the different power supply and coming along a cable and it can make your DAC sound better? you'd be better off putting the money into your DAC that has a better chip to begin with, or a better clock to begin with, than to buy some outboard clock to try and make your DAC sound better, when really that was designed for synchronizing gear together for making error-free time code on your production pieces, okay? So um, they're bastardizing this piece, the master clock, and making people believe that this is some thing that you must have to have the most correct ones and zeros or whatever it is for your digital it's not true buy a better DAC okay the funny part is if you look at some of these uh, outboard DACs they have they'll tout that they have an OCXO okay anytime something has an XO on it that means crystal okay what why does that mean crystal quartz crystal okay that means there's a little piece of quartz in there Quartz is piezoelectric. That means it vibrates in the in, in the in the presence of electromagnetism. It's different size of the piece, the different you know um, type of of, of, uh, of the magnetic. You, you, it's a different frequency that it vibrates at. Okay, but it, it holds the time. It holds a, a steady frequency. So there is the temperature control temperature control <laughs> temperature controlled TCXO. 
There is the, and then there's the oven controlled OCXO. The temperature controlled is just as the piece gets, gets warmed up and it gets warm, you get into the correct area of your, of your clock. The, the oven controlled actually has a little teeny oven around the, 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 the crystal that heats up and, and maintains a proper temperature for the premium operation of that, that crystal, okay? Um, that's what it's a little baby oven. You see them, they're a little bigger, okay? Um, and then the, the uh, uh, then the, uh, what's the, the, the first one? Then there's one that looks like the little tin can, not a TCXO, but it's a, uh, I can't remember the de designation, but there's three different levels of, of, of accuracy is really what it is. But quartz, as a timing piece, the quartz vibration from piezoelectric, that is old, okay? It is, it, it's no longer the shit anymore, okay? The OCXO is out of date, okay? There are clocks now that do much lower jitter than any of the crystal clocks that have a crystal in them, that have quartz in them. Uh, so if it has quartz, it's a has-been. It's not the latest technology. The latest pieces are, are electromechanical, and they keep much better time, and they are not OCXO, okay? Um, most of the new pieces that are uh, worth their salt are going to have these, these kind of clocks on them, okay? The Cristac and everything, that's past tense, okay? It's not happening anymore. Yeah, it's a good clock, but there's better now, okay? So... That's another, another reason not to buy an outboard OCXO that is, uses a quartz crystal, okay? Because it's old technology, and you're using it outboard, and you're not using it to, 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 uh, to um, um, synchronize things. You're using it for a different purpose, to try and make your DAC sound better. If you want your damn DAC to sound better, take the one, the 2000 3000 bucks that you spent on that damn clock and buy a better DAC, man. Um, it's, it's just, it makes much more sense. Much, much, much more sense. Okay, so that's the deal with, um, with the outboard clock.